Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to day 26. That's right, 26 of albums, <clears throat> excuse me, that are 30 years old in 2022. We're looking back on the year 1992 all month long, 31 days of March. We're all picking our 31 favorites from the year 1992. Today, this particular album released uh, May 11th. In 93 here in the States, but it was in uh, available to the rest of the world, September 7th, 1992. So we're going to go with the original release date uh, for most of the world. We were a little late to the game here in the States, as we seem to be quite a bit like in over the last like 30 years on certain things. Uh, came out on the Relativity label. It's the eighth studio album by this particular band, produced by the band and Danny Kochmar. I'm talking about Kingdom of Desire by... Toto, whoops, got that upside down. There we go. Kind of a weird album cover, I always thought. But a tremendous album nonetheless. In my opinion, one of the best <clears throat> excuse me, albums this band has ever done. Uh, and this is uh, basically the first album where Steve Lukather, guitarist, vocalist, songwriter, really kind of stepped out front as the de facto leader of the band. It's also the last album to feature uh, Jeff Picaro, who died uh, after the record was finished and during the rehearsals for the uh, tour to support this album. Again, in most parts of the world, but not here in the States, because uh, right around this time in the early 90s, I mean, total all but forgotten here in North America, which is a damn shame because they were releasing a lot of really, really good albums here that just got no promotion, didn't sell, in many cases, barely released here. So on this album, uh, basically the band down to a uh, pretty much a four-piece Steve Lukather guitars, lead and backing vocals. You got David Page on the pianos, organ synthesizers, backing vocals, uh, Mike Pacaro on bass and Jeff Pacaro on drums. Uh, there, there are some, uh, some quite a few folks helping out on backing vocals and percussion and things. We got Steve Pacaro shows up on synthesizers on a few tracks. We got folks like uh, Lenny Castro and, uh, geez, Don Menza, Chuck Finley, John Elefante, Philip Ingram, Steve George, Bobby Womack, uh, John Fogarty. I mean, all sorts of like uh, guest backing vocals. I mean, the list is too enormous to go into. But, uh, but a tremendous album. And definitely, if you had been following Toto up until this point, Toto, a very, very talented known by many people as more of a studio band, but they were actually a great live band as well. But because the band was put together by such famous studio musicians, they always kind of got that tag of like the faceless studio band who produced great pop music. They dabbled in funk and hard rock and little bits of prog, right? Well, on this album, this is a big, tremendous, hook-laden, heavy rock album. A good chunk of it anyway right from the get-go you got a song like gypsy train which is just tremendous riff heavy blues rock i mean i remember the first time i i bought this album and put this in i was like holy cow toto is cranking it out on this one and you got the very confident lead vocals from steve lukather i always thought steve was a very good singer here he's basically singing everything, or at least the lead vocals. A lot of people helping out on backing vocals, but really, really good. Uh, you got Don't Chain My Heart, <clears throat> which has a great hook, good pop hook. It's still a pretty rocking song, but definitely commercial, a little bluesy edge on there as well. You got Never Enough, another crazy hard rock tune. You got How Many Times, more of a ballad, more of a pop song. Definitely very, very memorable. Two Hearts, another very memorable pop song. You got uh, The Wings of Time, which is really kind of... Oh, man, I don't even know how to describe it. It's very moody and atmospheric. It's not quite pop. It's not quite hard rock. It falls somewhere in between. But great hook in there. Really, really, really intoxicating song. Then you got this kick-ass, funky, bluesy rocker called She Knows the Devil, which has some tremendous Steve Lukather guitar licks all throughout that song. Love that. Then you got The Other Side, soaring, melodic pop song, Only You, more of a ballad, really good. Kick Down the Walls, great, great hard rock song. The title track, Kingdom of Desire, is big and epic and kind of zeppelin -y. 
Really, really good, moody, hard rock song. Love the title track. And then all the way at the end of the album, you got the instrumental, the jazz fusion instrumental, Jake to the Bone. Kind of sounds like the Chicory Electric Band. It's just absolutely blazing. Such a great song. <clears throat> you know, I remember like when this album came out and I heard Jake to the Bone, I was like, man, I wish Toto did more instrumental stuff like this because, I mean, these guys were are amazing musicians. And I think if they wanted to, they could have been a total instrumental band and just done stuff like that. You know, the masses wouldn't buy it, obviously, but cats like me would be like, yeah, that's what we want, right? But I love this album. It's a great mix of just kind of a melodic pop stuff, searing hard rock, blues rock, and a little touch of jazz fusion. Uh, and Lukather's guitar work is absolutely stellar throughout um there's a reason why this is one of my favorite toto albums and has been since the day it came out it's just spectacular kingdom of desire from toto is my pick today day 26 as we are marching through the month of uh marching through march we're almost done we got less than a week to go so uh let us know what you think of kingdom of desire as well as your pick for day 26 down in the comments below and visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org we're on facebook we're on twitter of course we're here on youtube all the damn time uh, God, like I said, the, the, this last week are my absolute, absolute favorites. We've got some real good stuff coming up, so stay tuned each and every day throughout the month before we switch gears into something totally different for April. So uh, I am Pete Bardo. Thanks for watching. Please visit us on the web. You know all those places. Uh, also, go down below. We've got the link to our Ko-Fi page if you care to make a channel donation. All of your donations are greatly appreciated to help us continue to buy more music to talk about, more movies to watch and talk about, and all that good stuff. Uh, it all goes into additional content for the channel. We also have the link to our merch page below where you can get all sorts of cool Sea of Tranquility shirts and uh, hoodies and hats and caps and all sorts of cool things. So uh, that also helps spread the word of the channel. When you, I love hearing stories. I mean, it's great stories. Just a couple weeks ago, one of our viewers was out at the supermarket one day wearing his Sea of Tranquility shirt, and he sees he's on the checkout line. He sees some guy waving to him three aisles down that he's never seen before in his life. The guy's like trying to get his attention, and then when he finally gets his attention, he points and he's got a Sea of Tranquility shirt. How cool is that? Two guys in the same town, in the same supermarket, both wearing Sea of Tranquility shirts, and they don't even know each other. Ah, I hear stuff like that, and it's like, wow, we've come a long way. So anyway, get, get yourself a, a Sea of Tranquility shirt or hat or hoodie or cap or whatever it is, and uh, help spread the word. If someone asks you out at the supermarket, out at the gym, out wherever you are, what is this Sea of Tranquility thing? Tell them and hopefully turn someone new onto all the great stuff we're doing here. So uh, thanks for watching. I am P. Pardo. We'll see you tomorrow morning with another album that is 30 years old in 2022. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.